Alright guys, welcome back to another video and today we're here to do an Apple Vision Pro video and today it's all about giving you my top 12 tips and tricks on the Apple Vision Pro to show you guys everything that I've learned so far and everything that is kind of hidden in the OS or things that most people don't know about. So we're going to go ahead and get into it in this video. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech, going for a brekkie is the gaming tech, gaming tech is the gaming tech. So the first thing I wanted to talk about in this video is the 3D movie experience on the Apple Vision Pro. Now the Apple Vision Pro has fantastic 3D movies and watching 3D movies on here is amazing and Apple touted this by having over 200 movies released on the Apple TV platform as soon as the Apple Vision Pro launched. And a lot of us got excited because they talked about the fact that you're going to be able to go in there and a lot of your movies were going to get, get the 3D upgrades for free. They're kind of the same thing that they did with the 4K upgrades back in the day. Uh, but what a lot of us found is that when it released, a lot of the movies that we had in the 3D section of our library weren't showing all the movies that were supposed to be in 3D. And it's kind of annoying because unfortunately it looks like Apple is not letting you, is not actually upgrading everyone for free like we all thought they were going to be. It had to be movies that you actually purchased on the iTunes platform. So in other words, if you were a person that kind of purchased it on uh, Movies Anywhere and you kind of have iTunes synced, and Apple sync through movies anywhere. Those movies do not count to get 3D movies upgraded for free. And it was kind of the same thing with the 4K, uh, 4K upgrades as well. Back then, it was a really easy workaround because you just gifted yourself the movie. And gifting has kind of gone away because there's no way to gift movies now on the Apple TV Plus app like there used to be on the iTunes app. So I actually found a workaround for this. You basically have to download iTunes on your PC, download 12.10.11 on your Windows PC, download that, and then you'll be able to sign in uh, it's a it's an old version of iTunes, but it lets you sign in and search for the movies. You'll have to repurchase those movies, unfortunately, through the iTunes store. But you can actually gift the movie to yourself and then redeem it, uh, you know, on your proper account that you're using on the Apple Vision Pro, and then you'll be good to go, and the movies will actually show up. I did this with a couple of movies that I really wanted, and they're now in my library where they weren't before. And some of the things that people were noticing too is even if they didn't appear in your library and you search for them, it still appeared like you own them. But what, even when you clicked on them, it even popped up and said, hey, play in 3D or play in 2D. But then when you clicked on play in 3D, you're like, wait, this is playing in 2D. Why does this not look in 3D? And it's the same thing because Apple thinks that you own the movie, but it doesn't recognize the fact that you don't own the 3D section. So it still makes it seem like you can play it but then you find out you can't because it's just playing in 2D. So that's the workaround for it, and that's my tip number 12 for 3D movies. Tip number 11 comes across for the FOV here, and it all comes about of this light seal that we have here on the Apple Vision Pro as you guys are looking at. So this light seal that I have here, um, it's really interesting because when I first did my face scan and stuff and I went to the Apple Store and picked my Apple Vision Pro up, I ended up getting a 33W. That's what my face scan was kind of measured for. And then I saw a lot of people on Reddit, like, you know, a couple of days afterwards on Sunday talking about, like, the FOV wasn't that great because of these higher numbers and stuff. And I was like, wait a minute, because I'm experiencing the same thing. A lot of people in the beginning were saying that this FOV was supposed to be like the Quest 3. And I don't find it anywhere near like the Quest 3. It's definitely more like the Quest 2. The FOV was pretty narrow and small. Uh, it was one of my disappointments about the headset when I put it on. And then they were saying... You know, go go back to the Apple Store and try other fits that are more, you know, and, and 21W is the one that's referred to the most out there by a lot of people on Reddit and stuff that they're actually trying out anywhere from 21 to 23 and stuff. And I went over there and actually went to go try it and I got a 21W. This is a 21W in front of me. Apple swapped it out with no issues. And the FOV is so much better now with these lower numbers as opposed to getting these higher numbers. Uh, that you get with the Apple Vision Pro when you first did your face scan. With the 21W, the actual FOV now is exactly like the Quest 3 for me, which is amazing. And I do actually use the Zeiss inserts as well because a lot of people wonder that. Uh, and uh, I do get the warning message that says your eyes may be too close to the lenses and blah, blah, blah. But I just hit OK and ignore the message and I'm perfectly fine and it doesn't bother me again when I have the headset in. So I do use the Zen inserts, the Zeiss inserts, and I do use the 21W uh, in there and I have no issues and my, my eyes are not touching the lenses that I can feel. And the FOV is just as good as it is on the Quest 3, which is amazing. Uh, so if you guys are experiencing low FOV and you're thinking it's not as big as the Quest 3, check out, go to your Apple store, try different numbers out. Uh, some people got 11W, some people are getting 21. It kind of depends on the uh, on your facial measurements and stuff. So try, basically just don't get anything in the 30s. Uh, try to stick to anything under 25 and under from everything that people are saying on Reddit as far as you know getting the best FOV. But go out there and try these numbers out and you'll experience that the FOV will get a giant increase. 
increase if you started in the numbers like I did, like a 33 that I got. Uh, this is so much better. So the FOV, there's your tip for number 11. The next tip here coming in at number 10 is going to be the environmental uh, environments that you have on here uh, for the Apple Vision Pro that ha actually all have some sort of Easter egg in them. And apparently a lot of them have Easter eggs, but we haven't even found all of them yet. But I can tell you one of them right now that's really cool. And this is shows the attention to detail that Apple has with their products that, you know, sometimes goes missed and we just take for granted. If you go into Mount Hood as one of your options where you're kind of sitting on the mountaintops and stuff like that, if you actually yell, it will actually echo to make it feel like you're actually in the mountains yelling inside the mountains. That is one of the Easter eggs in there uh, that is coming up as a tip of number 10. And there are other Easter eggs from what I'm being told on some of the other environments. I haven't found any. So if you found other Easter eggs, leave those down below. But uh, this one was really cool. The fact that it really makes you feel like you're in the you know mountains and stuff because you yell, it just kind of shows that attention and detail that Apple kind of shows with their products and really goes like, oh, that's really cool. So something for you guys to try out in Mount Hood and uh, keep an eye out for the other environments and maybe other Easter eggs in there. So that comes in at number 10. The next tip coming in at number nine, uh, number nine is the guest mode feature. Now, we, uh, as, as we show this headset to other people, I've showed this headset already to like seven or eight people already this past week already since the headset came out. And one of the things I noticed immediately is the fact that like when I turned on guest mode and I allowed them to have full access to the app, you put them in the headset and they're going through the process of setting it up. I was walking them through some of the demo experiences and stuff while you know mirroring it on my Mac or on my phone and stuff, which you can do. But unfortunately, what I found out is that like while you're showing them like an immersive environment like in Disney Plus and you're showing them a giant movie, all you see is a black screen on the Vision Pro and on the mirroring side as well, of course, because you're seeing the same thing the Vision Pro sees. And a lot of people were wondering why that is. They thought something that you couldn't just, a lot of people were assuming you couldn't just see movies in guest mode and it was confusing a lot of people. But that's actually not what it is. It's, it's copyright issues that are causing this problem. And it happens anytime you mirror any of these things. If you mirror your iPhone or anything to another device and you have something playing, it does the same thing. It blacks it out. A lot of the devices out there do it uh, because of copyright protection law. So basically what I do now when I demo people, you know, this headset is I basically go into guest mode. I demo everything I want to show them that's not video related, whether it be, uh, you know, photos or spatial videos because those are mine and not copyright whatever the case may be i do all of those things that i want to show them safari and how to manipulate windows and then when i get to the movie portion i'm going to show them disney plus i go ahead and turn off the mirroring once they're in the disney plus app and then i have them click play on the video and then they can see it without any problem just like that so make sure that that's something you guys are aware of so you're not confused that you just can't watch videos in guest mode because that's not true you just need to have that little workaround ready and not be mirroring it to another display so that is tip number nine Tip number eight actually goes along the same exact line and it's exactly about mirroring to other devices. And the way you do it, uh, you basically just pull up and you look up while you're looking at the Vision Pro, make sure you're looking dead ahead with your eyes. Uh, and don't move your head, but just look up with your eyes like if you're looking upwards at the sky in the Vision Pro without moving your head. And you'll see the little control center and arrow point down. You go ahead and click that arrow and you press enter uh, your, your fingers together to obviously select it. It brings up a menu and then you select the button there that you guys are looking at here that actually shows you the, uh, you know, to, to basically mirror yourself. Uh, to whatever device you want, whether it be an iPhone or a Mac. I've done it to those. And actually, it also works with other AirPlay devices as well. It's like my LG OLED screen that I have here uh, behind me. It would actually let me mirror it to that as well so I can show it on the big screen behind me if I want to. Or uh, So that's a tip for you guys. It not only works with the iPhone and the Macs and stuff like that to mirror your devices, but you can also mirror it to other AirPlay devices uh, like an Apple TV or like an LG OLED screen as well. The next tip coming in at number seven here is being able to bring apps closer to you and use them like there are iPads in front of you. So for those apps that are kind of, you know, compatible with Vision Pro, uh, but they're not exclusively designed for it, like those third, those iPad apps that we're using, uh, you don't always have to use them in a sense where you have to look at them with eye tracking and scroll up and down. You can actually bring these apps closer to you, right in front of you, like you're looking at a, a giant iPad right in front of your eyes, and you can actually just scroll on them and use them like you're natively using a iPad in front of you, which I don't think a lot of people know. You can directly just interact by touching things on the actual screen or scrolling up and down. You don't need to look at the screens with eye tracking and stuff like that. You can actually just touch them directly. And it actually works super, super well. And it's something that I think a lot of people aren't noticing you can actually do, which is awesome. And it works really well, actually. And I was surprised how well it worked. And I sometimes do do that depending on the apps that I'm actually using, especially the ones that are compatible with it that are not designed for it. It's a great way to use them uh, and have it work really well. 
The next tip here coming in at number seven is the fact that your persona works with any app on the actual Apple Vision Pro, even if it wasn't an app that was designed for the Vision Pro, even if they're third party, if it pulls for a camera. For example, I was on Twitter the other day and I was tweeting for the first time from my Apple Vision Pro. And when it calls for the camera and you can take a picture of yourself because it thinks you're on an iPhone, for example, or an iPad, when it pulls that up, you could actually see your persona. Uh, same thing for any of the other apps out there. If they call for a camera, it's just integrated into the fact that like whatever app uses a camera, it's just going to use your persona by default. So Apple did that in a really clever way. So we don't have to rely on third party apps out there getting updated and doing their own thing. Anytime it calls for a camera app, your persona will be ready to go, which makes using these apps even better. So you don't have to wait for support from them, which is awesome. So that is my tip number seven about personas. The next tip we have right here coming in at number five for you guys is actually how to turn off the Vision Pro. Uh, if I have the Vision Pro right here, a lot of people when they first got their Vision Pro or the early reviewers and stuff like that talking about it made it seem like you had to disconnect this cord to basically power it off, uh, which is definitely not true. You can actually power it off in a couple of different ways that has nothing to do with pulling this cord out. One of them is by holding the crown, digital crown button on the top. And also the button here on the top, you could hold these two buttons together down for five, for eight or nine seconds. Once you hold them down, you'll actually see after holding them down that the slide to power off will come up. You can look at the slide to power off and slide it across the screen and it will actually turn off the device for you, which is really convenient and really easy. So that's one way to turn it off. You can also just tell Siri why you're actually in here to go ahead and turn off the device for you as well. Both of these methods are obviously a lot better than yanking the cord out of the side, which I never thought would make sense that that wasn't a feature in there because who wants to, you know, yank it while it's powered on. Uh, so these are the two ways that I would definitely tell you to turn off your Apple Vision Pro and comes in at your tip number five. The next tip coming in here at number four is actually mic recording on the Apple Vision Pro. A lot of people are always wondering, how do you actually... You know, can you do screen recordings on the Apple Vision Pro? Yes, you definitely can by pulling up that control center that I talked about earlier in the video where you look straight ahead and then you put your eyes upwards without moving your head, the little arrow points down, you click on it and then you get that option to pull up and you see the, record, the screen recording option sitting right in front of you. But what people don't know is that a lot of these things in the Apple Vision Pro ecosystem and different apps and stuff, when you actually pinch and hold on top of the icon, it will actually give you a menu that pops up that gives you most of those other options that people expect if you don't just click on the icon. So if you actually look at the screen recording and you just press it, it's just going to start a screen recording with no microphone. However, if you look at that and you actually hold your fingers together when you're pinching, you'll actually get the options to pop up and there you can actually turn your microphone on and then you can use the built-in microphone on the Apple Vision Pro and screen recording at the same time, which makes it really convenient to take videos like I'm doing here in this video and uh, be able to share it with you guys really easily. And what's awesome is it syncs with iCloud so you don't even have to do anything after you take those screen recordings because they'll be ready to go uploaded to iCloud and uh, you can use them wherever you need to to edit your videos. So that is the microphone tip coming in at number four. The next tip I wanna get into coming in at number three is the demo reel that a lot of people talked about at the Apple TV uh, demo when they're going to get these the demos at the Apple store, looking at the Vision Pro. One of the things that people always talk about that they come away really impressed by is the uh, immersive video that they show people. It's about a three minute video that kind of showcases all these different things like how sporting events will look like, watching baseball, looking at Alicia Keys and seeing how it looked like in concert form, watching people play soccer, uh, you know, watching whales come at you and stuff like that. And it's really, really immersive. It's filled in 8K, 180, 3D, and it looks amazing. And I was really disappointed. I thought you can only see it, you know, there. And I was like, I'm gonna have to go get this demo just to be able to see this because I didn't see it anywhere on the store. But it actually is there. If you open up the Apple TV app on your Apple Vision Pro and you click on the search bar on the top left, uh, you see the icons come up in front of you and you click on uh, Apple Vision Pro videos only and you click that tile and you scroll down a little bit and you scroll to the right of that first section, you will see right next to their other immersive videos that they've made so far, the four that they've made, you'll see immersive video right there at the edge there and you'll be able to watch this. And this is the demo reel that they're showing everybody in the demos uh, you know, at the Apple store and you can watch this anytime you want. It is now something that I show people all the time and their minds are always blown to see the quality of this thing, uh, especially people who have never seen an immersive video like this to kind of be sitting there right next to Alicia Keys and watching these sporting events and really get you excited to see, hey, I can't wait for sports to be using whatever Apple cameras they're using to record this stuff because it looks outstanding and it looks now good enough to get excited about watching these concerts and stuff in real life and it's gonna be awesome. So that is your tip 
uh, to be able to watch the same demo experience that they're getting at the Apple stores. The next thing I wanted to talk about with the Apple Vision Pro as a tip coming in here at number two is definitely these lens inserts that are on the Apple Vision Pro. These are these Zeiss inserts that I have on here that I got because as you guys can tell, I can wear glasses. They really go in here really easily. You can see that I'm holding it in my hands and all you do is it snaps right in there and that's it. You can hear the click. It snaps right in there, magnetically attaches. It's really easy to take in and out. Uh, which is great because I have to use these. Otherwise, I can't see anything because I'm blind in there. And this does not work with glasses, as, you, as most of you guys know. Uh, so you can only use either soft contacts or these inserts. You could use some hard contacts, but some of them may interfere apparently with the eye tracking and stuff. So that's something to keep in mind. But even if this thing worked with glasses, I would still recommend people use, uh, you know, inserts. I say that about the Quest 3 all the time as well. That's the first thing and the first accessory I would recommend everybody purchase when they have a VR headset if you're a person who wears glasses because it just makes things a lot better to see. It makes you not have to worry about glasses and stuff being uncomfortable in there and just not having to wear contacts or anything and you could feel like you can actually see for the very first time and and, and see what it feels like to you know, not have to wear glasses or contacts like, like some of the other parts of the world can. So I think it's awesome and it makes things even clearer in my opinion and even when I used to use my glasses on the Quest 3 or contacts on the Vision Pro or the Quest 3, I still feel like when I get these inserts, it looks even better that I'm not wearing those things than just using these inserts. So I think they're amazing and it's definitely, you know, the first accessory I would buy for sure for the Apple Vision Pro or any VR headset out there. And it comes in as your tip number two. And the number one tip here that we have for you today is unfortunately not something I could show you on the Apple Vision Pro because I just don't have enough people to do this with. Uh, but I do want to at least talk about it because a lot of people who are watching movies, for example, even me, myself, when I talk about watching movies on the Quest 3, for example, I talk about a social experience. And I always talk about how awesome it is to go into big screen and be with other people and talk to them, especially watching sporting events and stuff. It's a fantastic experience and it's what makes me watch movies and sporting events and stuff like that in VR and on the Quest 3. And on the Apple Vision Pro, it's not really very apparent on how you can actually do this. I still don't think it's as good as it needs to be. You can't be in the same room, at least right now, uh, watching you know a bunch of your different content on Disney Plus or on Apple TV and stuff with your personas all over the place, which I think is Apple's probable goal is to be able to be in like a, a virtual environment and their and their environments that they're creating and just have a bunch of personas out there watching together. If you have an Apple Vision Pro, that's not there. But what is there? Because I thought you couldn't do it at all is you can actually watch a movie together with other people who are not even using an Apple Vision Pro thanks to SharePlay, a feature that's been in iOS already for a while now that works through FaceTime calls. So imagine what you do is you bring up your virtual screen. Let's say you're watching Disney Plus, for example. As long as it supports SharePlay, what Disney Plus does and Apple TV does, you open up that app, you're in your immersive environment and stuff, and basically you create a FaceTime call with as many people as you want. You put them in your environment basically as you're watching disney plus and you put them in your environment or apple tv and you have all these facetime calls going on and then everybody gets invited to a share play uh, so you can actually invite them to share play and watching the movie together and then everyone's watching the movie together and you're all on a facetime call kind of you know, watching these movies together. And, and obviously some of the iPad games can do the same thing as well if you're doing it on here where you can share play with others and be on a FaceTime call. So it becomes a lot more social when you're watching movies like that together, especially from people who are far away that you may not live with or friends that are in other countries. So I really think it's cool, but I do think Apple needs to take this a step further for sure and let you be in an environment together uh, with your personas and stuff. Because right now the way you do this is because you have to have FaceTime calls overlaid and stuff, uh, you can't really have other apps open when you're using Disney Plus and stuff when you're in like a virtual environment. So you're going to have to be, you know, in Disney Plus in your in your pass through mode, essentially, where you're not in a virtual environment. So you have the gigantic Disney Plus screen. Then you have all your FaceTime calls and then you can make those calls and then have everybody on SharePlay watching a movie together or playing a game together, whatever it may be. So I think it's cool that it's there and it's cool that it's an OS driven feature and that it's been there for a while. Hopefully Apple adds more social features like I talked about where you're all in the same room together with your personas. But it is a good starting point. It's definitely better than not watching anything social or playing anything social at all. So really, really cool stuff. And uh, hopefully that helps you guys out. That is my top 12 tips on the Apple Vision Pro that we have going on today. We're obviously all learning stuff new all the time. So when I have another 10 or 12 tips that are related that you guys that I think will help, I'll make another video just like this. And let me know the tips and tricks that you guys know so far. Leave those down below on some of your favorite things that you've come across that are maybe not well known that I didn't mention in this video. And thank you guys for watching. Till next time.